Okay, I've got an old chain link fence and uh, I want to convert it into something that matches my neighbor's fence. So I've got a gate here that's just chain link and I'm going to put horizontal boards um, like, like these going across of uh, various widths or you know various thicknesses and uh, let's see how it goes. I'll probably make a lot of mistakes and I'll I'll show you my mistakes as well as, uh, as some of the successes. And you can see here, here is the basic skeleton of what the project is going to go on. Each board, uh, well two main boards are attached to the fence itself and it turns out I'm going to attach the rest of the boards to those boards. Uh, you can see you know, where they're attached down there and how they poke through and hold on. I've got a few boards in place right there where you can see where we're going to go with this. Yeah, so I've got my pattern of uh, medium size, medium size, small, small, large. So I have a pattern of sizes and I have a pattern of dark, dark, light, dark, dark. So I'm just sticking to my pattern. And I'd actually drawn a, a sketch to keep track of that. But when I'm out here doing my cuts, it's just easier on a sheet of paper like this. Okay, so one of the major things is trying to keep your fence level as you add the boards on. So you can use a paint stick in between or you can use a measuring tape from the bottom each time. Well I recommend both but definitely the measuring tape will keep it level. The other thing is decide if you want to cut your board ahead of time on the table saw where your gate's going to open. I'll show you a lot of trouble it gave me in just a minute by not doing that. Yeah, so I finally figured out wood is bendable. This one's sticking up way too high. So basically I can um, just move it up and down and get it in position. So basically put a few paint sticks, take a drill, and put the hole exactly where I want. I didn't realize that. There's a couple others that I, I wish I would have done that on. All right, here's the almost finished product, and uh, definitely got one comment. Let me show you a mistake already. Look how jagged this line is. It's uh, completely uneven, and that's what you get when you try to do work at night, and uh, B, when you try to use a jigsaw. So use the right tools. You don't want to use one of these to cut a nice straight line in a fence. Uh, you might be able to do it, but you're just asking for the blade to wander around. So I went back to the store, got me a nice uh, nice skill saw, and that's going to make a real nice cut. So I'll show you how I'm going to fix it. Now one other mistake is you can see that the once I cut it, the, the fence has sagged a lot. Now I knew that was going to happen. Um, on the left hand side we have a double fence post, and this just doesn't move much this way or that way due to the weight. However, part of the reason why this whole project got started is I used to have two pulls on this side but now I just have one and you can see it really moves around. Well, I don't know if you can see that but just even taking this pole back like a quarter inch causes the entire fence to lift up and become even again. So I've got a little product inside of here. Where are you? Here it is. Uh, this is going to go around the the fence pole, and it's I'm going to have this uh, bolted to the concrete, and I'm going to use uh, slightly longer lag bolts here, or uh, well, I mean whatever these galvanized bolts are, and I'm going to be able to wrench the pole back to the correct length. That's the theory, and I'm going to have to anchor this with some, you know, some masonry anchors that I'll show you in a minute. And finally another mistake is look at my meandering bolts going uh, left and right. So I really recommend you get a ruler uh, like a chalk line or something that you can erase later off of your boards because that's a really crummy job. It's things like that that keep me from ever really wanting to do projects because I know I'll beat myself up. This side I did a lot better once I became conscious of it. So, you know. Uh, and also, I made a lot of mistakes drilling extra holes, uh, mainly because 
Uh, sometimes back here on the fence components, you'll hit metal. So, you know, it's just something to, to be mindful. If you can do a better job than I did, great. Uh, it's probably not, not hard to do. And finally, I didn't get the right size bolts. You know, three inch bolts going through two of these pieces of wood, just too long. But as you can see, the two inch bolts look super nice. I'll show you. I mean, I mean, look at that. See, that's a two inch bolt there and that's the three inch bolt. I, I thought I was gonna go through the entire metal for every, uh, every one I was inserting, but I just wound up just going through the wood. So I'll probably go back to the store and get the two inch bolts and replace them. But once I'm done. So I've got it propped up. And everything's a little bit of a compromise, but I went with the top lining up. Have, yeah, you know, you see all the wood trying to trying to twist around. Nothing's quite perfect, but I've got it propped up, and now I'm going to put the wall bracket in place. And I'm going to do this before I do the cuts, so I get as straight of an edge as I can. So now that I've got the fence propped up. My, my bracket actually touches the concrete. I thought I was going to need longer bolts here, but these are long enough uh, once I get the fence aligned again. The only thing I don't really like is it's not got a lot of concrete to, to bind into, but uh, the other side does. And maybe I'll angle these. My cheapy masonry bits just melted down, so I can't stress enough. Get a good masonry bit and get something to blow the dust out, or you're gonna have a hard time getting the bolts in. Uh, the basic way uh, these lag bolts work is the tighter you screw the nut down, the more it flares out and bites into the concrete. So you gently put them in, then you get a little bit of, uh, of thread for the nut to bite onto and you just start tightening them down and then you can take that nut back off slip your plate over and uh, just re-tighten it I had to tighten this one and take it back off because I had to put the washer on sometimes you don't have enough sticking through so you have to start without the washer So from the back side, this is where you're actually going to get your fence level. As you tighten that, that's pulling it, that's pulling the top part up. And then you can go to put a, a level on your fence or eyeball it and see if you've brought it up enough. So as you can see here, it's, it's very level. I'm gonna put this blade on and with it comes this little this nut but it'll just turn unless you hold this little mechanism down while you turn it okay so sure I managed to get this uh, a decently straight line with the skill saw but I still wanted to put a trim board on it for a final look. So it's very dangerous what I did with this skill saw. It, it jumped around a bit, almost chopped my toes off. So look, just use a trim board or a jigsaw with a nice straight edge to keep your jigsaw line straight or do it on the table saw. You got a lot of options there, but don't, don't use the skill saw like I did freehand. Bad idea. Let me show you the final project. Uh, 
Basically I got a gate stopper to keep that side from swinging open and I have a little gate latch over here to keep the other side from flying open. It was just a, a piece of metal from my old chain link that I took and I bolted through. Another really good reason to have a trim board is that's a great place for it to rest. Now let me show you what I did with the, the gate stopper itself. Basically either you'll find straight pieces of metal that come off of your chain link that hold it together and uh, there's likely a place where your gate used to have a uh, metal rod that would keep it from flying open. So I just bent this piece over, added a notch to the wood, and this allows me just to kind of slip it up when I want to open the gate all the way or put it back in place when I, when I don't want that side swinging open. So it's pretty useful all around. It's been a usable design and stays in place. Well that wraps up the chain link to modern wooden fence conversion, which you see right behind me. I'm pretty happy with it. I think if you just uh, pay attention to the how not to's, you know, mainly be real careful with your fingers and a circular saw, measure a few things, get some straight edges, watch your bolt links. I think you'll be happier even, even so with your project. Until then, this is Travis Somerville signing off with another how not to project.